Hey guys, welcome back. Time for a lesson on walk cycles. Here we go. So, what's a walk cycle? A walk cycle is uh, a loop, looped set of frames uh, that give the illusion uh, that someone is walking. Someone or something is walking. And uh, it can look pretty cool. It's a great animation technique. Walk cycles can, can tend actually to be very complicated to make. They can be really tough uh, and require many, many frames to make them look really good. For example, in this uh, animal, beast, dog, creature, over 20, 20 something frames uh, for this single walk cycle. But the way it loops, it looks like it keeps running. So that's the cool thing about a walk cycle. But really, instead of 20 plus frames, uh, there are really only eight key positions that you need for making a walk cycle. So there's the, the contact position where the foot is initially stepping and touching the ground in front of the character. Then there's the, the down position where the uh, character's head basically bobs down as they step down. The pass position where the character's other leg is passing uh, behind or in front of the legs currently walking. And finally, up position, where the head is at the highest point on this cycle. And uh, the kind of back leg is kind of lifting up as it's stepping forward. And then the next four uh, positions for the next leg, for the leg on the other side. Okay, so there's just eight, these uh, eight positions to make a walk cycle. But actually, you can simplify it even more. You only need four frames, not eight. You just need these four frames, as long as you uh, don't really designate which leg is in the background. Or you can use a stick figure, okay? So for example, if you don't tell which leg is moving, if it's the front one or the back one, or the background or the foreground, then it, it will kind of blend together and you only need four frames. So the four frame loop works because it's uh, it's an illusion of walking because even though you have just only the frames from one leg walking forward in front of the other one, uh, your brain connects the dots as it does with any animation really. Your brain just sees these individual pictures flash in front of you and it thinks, oh, that character's moving or Oh, that character's walking okay so for example on these four frames the back leg is here and it's coming forward stepping in front and stepping forward that's it it's just one leg being animated but then your brain loops and it thinks oh now it's here and now it's the next leg moving forward like so okay then you can see oh it looks like he's actually walking kind of but it's just those four frames here's a new term Tween. That's a silly word. What's a tween? Is it like a really cool teenager from the 80s? No, we're talking about animation. Tweening is uh, taking two key movement frames, okay? Two key positions and uh, then going back and making the frames in between those two key positions, okay? So tween stands for in between. So here we have uh, key frames here and here and here, and and the, the tween frames are where the position is drawn between those frames. And tweening is important because, as you can see, this it looks like the character's walking, but it's really kind of clunky and kind of stuttery, and it doesn't look very good. It looks kind of it's kind of bad, actually, <laughs> if you ask me, even though I drew that. Uh, so if you add more tween frames, you can really get your character to look like it's smoothly walking better. Today, let's make some walk cycles using a new animation program I discovered called 
Brush Ninja. Okay, here we go. All right, so to get to this new program, you can go to my class website and then uh, go to Fun Stuff. Or you can click the link that's probably in the assignment uh, on Google Classroom or Seesaw, wherever it is. But you can also go to Fun Stuff and then go over to Animation and go down to Brush Ninja right below Piscal Art and click Brush Ninja. And this is a great program, uh, I think. It's pretty cool. It's don't have to download anything, it's totally free, and you can make a cool animation. For example, I made this uh, animation of this guy walking, very simple, in eight frames. Ta-da! To make a brand new animation, you can click New, and here we go, and I'll just start out, and I'll show you some tools, okay? So here's the tool menu right here. Start you on the pen tool, or pencil tool, whatever you want to call it, and it's got different sizes. It can go down to really small even or up to pretty darn large. Uh, and it can even go kind of opaque, uh, increase the transparency or decrease it. So that's the, the main drawing tool right there, but you can click the tools and then you have all the sorts of different things. So like you can do shapes, you can do uh, basically a line creation tool. It's pretty cool. And of course the eraser with different sizes. Uh, and a text creation thing. So ABC text, you can type your text. Oh, apply, and you can make some words. Pretty easy. And finally, the uh, mechanical thing. This actually can move your picture around, but it's kind of like on a on a plane with itself. So if you move it one way, you'll start to see it again coming out the other side. Uh, and this, I think, what does this do? Oh, it rotates, of course. And this shrinks or enlarges. Really useful if you're going to do like a zoom animation of something. Uh, and that's about that. And this, I think this blurs it. Yeah, that's what it's doing. Interesting. So be careful with those toolbar ones. Uh, so I don't really like what I made there. So I'm just going to erase and start over. And I'll do like a little walk animation with you here. Um, this program is great because you can use it and you can make a, a GIF, a GIF of any animation you want. But when you do make it, as you can see here, it says hashtag brush ninja. And that'll be kind of on your GIF once you uh, export it or whatnot. To get rid of that, to start out with, you can go to this little tool and go to uh, animation. And this is handy because this is where you also set your frames per second. Remember, frames per second is how fast your animation is played. And it's set to 10, which is it's a decent speed. It's not too fast, not too sl uh, slow either. I think I'll increase it to like maybe 12 just because you can play around with it, of course. Uh, and you can get rid of that little hashtag for the credits. Let me show you a few more things. I'm going to draw a character. We're doing another walk cycle. So here we go. And he's going to be doing the oops, control Z to undo, of course. He's going to be doing the down position, or not the down position, the contact position, right? Where this foot is contacting the ground right there. Uh, that's my first frame. To make a new frame, click new frame. There's also hotkeys if you uh, hold over it. It's press N for new frame, which is really handy. The plus and minus thing here, that when you hover over your frames, this actually increases the length of time your frame is visible. So if you want to basically have a duplicate of your frame right after your frame and have that frame last a little longer, you can use the plus one. Or, or sorry, plus two or three, however longer you want that single frame to last for. But we just want to do, I think I want to just do normal frame rate, regular frames here. So, oh no, but where's my onion skin? I need my onion skin, right? So I can 
tell what I'm drawing and try to trace over it again so I can animate better. Where's my onion skin? Well, here's the onion skin right here, okay? You see this little icon? That is the onion skin of, skin of previous frames, and it actually is of two frames for this onion skin, so it can get a little confusing unless you uh, give yourself a little bit of extra frames in between. So I click it, there's my onion skin of my before frame right here. And I can draw over it, oops, and I wanna have the head go down, because this is gonna be the down frame, right? And I'll draw the body, and the leg is going down and stepping down. And this leg, oops, this leg is starting to come up, let's see, and coming forward, okay? And we can do next frame. Aha, so I'm starting to get that two onion skin thing going on, uh, but that's okay. You can just kind of deal with it. And uh, so here we go. Head should be coming back up a little bit, if I remember correctly. You can take a look on my website if you forget uh, how the walk cycle goes. And you can have it open in a separate window if you want. So, so I'll just speed up this part and I'll try to make my guy real fast. Um, doing the walking, but remember the frames go, uh, you do the contact frame, the down frame, then it's the pass frame, that's the pass frame, and finally for the last fourth frame, here's the up frame. Now, let's see what it looks like, here we go. Look at that, we got a basic walk cycle already with only four frames, cool. All right, for next part, how do we make it smoother and better? You gotta add some tweens, right? You gotta add some tween frames. So we can do new frame. And once you click new frame, you can click and drag this frame around, okay? And new frame, and you can drag a, a new frame between each, between, ha <laughs> between each uh, frame you have already. Now you can go to this frame and you can start to animate the tween but you want to be able to see what your guy is doing in both the before picture and the after picture at the same time so you can kind of draw what it looks like between those frames okay so I'm gonna turn on the forward onion skin as well ooh now we can see both of them okay so I'm gonna to try to draw the head between these two heads yeah, not the best. There we go. Body's about the same position, luckily. But now for the legs. Okay, so this leg is just starting to come forward and it's starting to bend, but the foot should be kind of between. See that? This leg too. It's coming forward. It's almost stepping, but it's not quite there yet. So it's just stepping down between. Now we can go to this frame. Aha, but here's the problem. Look at that. There's too many there's too many pictures there. You see three different images. It's because the before onion skin does two onion skins, right? So we can do another frame, watch this, and I'll drag it and I'll kind of separate this. I won't need this extra frame, but it'll just help me basically just see the two frames that I'm looking for here and here. And see how they're separated by extra unseen frames you just got to pay attention to which tween you're doing okay to make it clear or you can leave on all the images too but then it's hard to get the real tween between just the two you're trying to get okay and let's take a look at our walk cycle again and there he's walking cool to export your picture click export okay this will save a file to your computer uh, and it'll allow you to download it. You click animated GIF right here, okay? You can also click save an image, but saving an image will save individual pictures of each one of your frames. So you won't get a, a playing animation. It'll just be like a comic strip of all your pictures you drew, which can be cool too if you're drawing a comic in this, but. Uh, let's do animated GIF and export and it's getting ready to make it and you click save and it'll save down here okay and it just always saves it as animation then with a little number of course your newest animation will have the uh, highest number okay 
And then you can take that from that saves in your downloads folder. You can take that and upload it to Google Classroom. I don't think you can upload it to Seesaw, unfortunately, but hopefully you can play around with this anyways. I hope I see some cool walk animations, guys. You don't have to animate a person walking. Now you can animate uh, like a creature too if you want or any kind of cycle animation. Go for it. Try to make as many frames as you can. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> that you need to... <laughs>